Good morning everybody and welcome to our last thought for the day for this week. It's Friday the 6th of November and uh, all week we've been looking at um, praying with Paul from Ephesians chapter 3. We're going to read the passage again this morning and just kind of bring it all to a close. But before we do that, let's pray together, shall we? Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for this new morning. Thank you for the sunshine. We pray, Lord, that you would uh, bless us today as we come and gather around your word for these few moments at the end of this week. Lord, that we would learn something from you again through your Holy Spirit, that you would apply your word to our hearts graciously and gently this morning, Lord, we pray. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so we're looking at uh, this last section really here of this prayer. We've been, we, we, remember Paul has been preaching, has been praying for the Ephesians. He, they are a Gentile people who have been, uh, have been brought into the Christian faith and they're following Jesus and Paul's wanted to encourage them to pray and to, to pray into themselves, if you like, all the benefits of being a followers of Jesus. And we've looked at that this week, the sort of things that we can pray for as well as followers of Jesus. And we can not only pray them for ourselves, but we pray them for each other as well. And so but we, we started, Paul starts this whole section uh, for this reason, verse 14. For this reason, I bow my knees <coughs> before the Father, from whom every, every family in heaven and on earth is named. And uh, we said he starts it, we get, we, wherever we come before the Lord and we're asking, we, we have these wonderful benefits, these wonderful benefits of his grace, which we read about in Ephesians chapter 2, that uh, we've been brought into his kingdom, we've been given all the benefits of his kingdom. But we don't come with any kind of bo uh, b false boldness of ourselves, but we come in humility, recognising that everything we have comes through his grace and his mercy. So we come in humility, we bow the knee, we have that attitude of, bowing the knee before the Lord Jesus as we come in prayer. And then Paul, uh, Paul goes on to say in his prayer that, uh, uh, that what, what he prays for. And he says that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant you to be strengthened with power through the Spirit in your inner beings. And we looked at how we can pray for that strength the, um, to stand up for Jesus and to resist the devil and to resist all of the things that would lead us astray from Christ. And the strength to cope and conquer in every situation that we find ourselves in. And that comes from within, not from within ourselves, but the Holy Spirit who is within us, in our inner man. Remember, that's the part of us, our inner being, the part of us that was made alive because Jesus came into our lives. So that's kind of where we were on, on Tuesday, if we were. And uh, so we pray for that strength. Um, and so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love, OK, rooted, grounded in great words, Christ dwelling in our hearts gives us not only strength, it also gives us stability that we can be rooted and grounded and secure in, in his love and his presence with us every single day, wherever we go. He's made his home with us, grounded in love that you may um, in love may have the strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth. And to know the love of Christ, which surpasses knowledge. We looked at that yesterday, didn't we really? This not only uh, strength and stability, but also the security. The breadth, length, depth, height of his love. How wide and deep and high and strong is his love for us. In our, uh, and so we're wrapped up in his arms of grace. And so we need to understand that. We don't, want to, we don't need to just hear about that, but we need to know that. We need to be... Uh, to be secure in that because we know it in our heart. We comprehend it. We grasp hold of it. We understand what Jesus... So he prays for strength. He prays for stability. He prays for security and understanding of all these things. And finally today, he prays for satisfaction as well, that we'll find our satisfaction in God. The last part of that is this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. What a wonderful picture that is. A picture of uh, the wind, if you like, filling a sail, um, if you, uh, or being made, as, as Paul writes elsewhere to the um, Colossians, the made complete in him. That everything is, is, is perfect because of him. That he completes everything about us. That everything makes sense because of Jesus. You might be filled. Life might make sense. It might be full and complete and whole because of Jesus. Because he gives us the strength, because he gives us stability, he gives us security. 
And, and so these are the things that Paul is praying for, for these Ephesian Christians and how we ought to be praying for ourselves. We have it all. God is within us. God made his home in us. And because he makes his home in us, we have, we have all these benefits, don't we? We can be strong. We can be secure. We can be stable because of Jesus who lives in us. We can't do that in our, uh, looking to ourselves and we can't make a stable and st secure and, 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 and satisfied life without Christ. That's what Paul is saying. And you've been brought in from outside into his kingdom. You've been grafted into his kingdom. You've been brought into all of the benefits and grounded and rooted into him. We have that stability and security. And so we pray this into being into our lives as we pray each day for ourselves. This is a prayer we could really read out aloud for ourselves from scripture, shouldn't we? Uh, as I say, picture of that wind filling a sail, that, that, that God is, is our purpose, is our driving force, is everything that is, is, is leading us in our lives, that there's no doldrums in a sense, there's no vacuums, there's no lulls, because we pray that God would fill us again today through his Holy Spirit, lead us and fulfill us in our lives. So we feel that, that wonderful word shalom that the, the, uh, the Hebrews use, isn't it? A peace that is not just a peace that's the absence of trouble, but a settled state that we can feel secure and settled and calm and confident and all these things that we've been praying for this week. Isn't that great? That's what God has promised us in Jesus. And it's no wonder, is it really? Because when you think of who it is, who's in us, it's greater than he, than anything that's in the world. Why wouldn't we be that way? Why wouldn't we feel that way? It's only when we take our eyes off the Lord Jesus and off the benefits that he's given us and off the wonders of his presence with us that we start to get unstable and insecure. So let's pray these things into being. Look at those last two verses. You see, it's not us that does this. You know, God promises strength and stability and security and satisfaction. But look what it says here, verse 20 and 21. Now to him, him who is able to do more abundantly than we can ask or think, even more than we can ask or think. We might not think that we could ever be stable or secure or satisfied, but he can do it in us more abundantly than we can ask or think. Why? According to the power at work within us. Remember, it's all about Christ in us. It's all about the fact that Christ has come to make his home in us. It's all about the fact that Christ has made us alive the thing that was dead in us, that gives us the strength. And we, we operate in that realm as Christians, in a sense. We, we operate in a different realm. We, we worship a God who we, we've had our eyes open and we have ears to hear. And God has given us these wonderful things. And so we, we, we read his word and it's not just a manual or a kind of study book, but it's life-giving. Do you know that this morning? Perhaps that's what we should be praying for in our lives, for to know these things, because this is what God has promised us. This is the real reason for, well, one of the many reasons, but the main reason why God has given us his Holy Spirit, so that we might know these things and we might experience these things in our lives. So it's, it's all according to his power at work in us, not my power, not me working hard, not me trying hard, not me you know, working myself into a frenzy to try and attain these things. These are things, I'm trying to look to the world for our satisfaction maybe, for our, our stability and our security. It won't be there. It's an ever-shifting sound. We know that. We're only too aware of that in these days, aren't we? The security, the strength, the stability, all come. And the satisfaction from all of that comes through Jesus living in us, doesn't it? And then he says... And the reason is, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. It's for his glory, isn't it? You see, God is most glorified um, when we are filled with all the fullness of God in him. That's when he's most glorified, because it's all based on relationship and grace with him. When we are, as we should be, bearing his image in the world, being confident, being stable, being secure in him, that's when he's most glorified because it shows his wonderful work in his people. So it's all for his glory, isn't it? To him be the glory. He's glorified when we are full. That's what he promises us. So how about it, folks? This is a great prayer to pray. Pray, for, pray it for yourselves. Pray it every day for ourselves. Pray it for your friends and people who you love. Pray it for your family. Pray it for your children. What a great verse. There's nothing better than we could pray for each other. Yes, we can pray for each other to get better. We can pray for provision for each one of us and all of that. But this is the prayer, really. One of the many that Paul writes, one of the number that Paul writes in the New Testament there for us to guide us into what really prayer 
is all about. Let's finish our time, shall we, this morning through prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for these wonderful blessings that we have in you. We pray, Lord, that you'd help us to appreciate them, to know them, to be strong, to be stable, to be secure, and to be satisfied in you today. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you once again for joining me today and all the other days this week. Uh, nothing tomorrow, of course, because it's Saturday, it's Sunday. We're back online again for our services, so join me at half past ten Sunday morning online for our online Sunday service and uh, pray that God will be with us then. It's Remembrance Sunday, so be there a little bit earlier if you can. Well, come at, 11, uh, at half past ten, but if you watch it at half past ten, about half an hour into the service, we will be pausing for a couple of minutes silence at 11 o'clock. Uh, so um, I'll tell you more about that as I send the email out to you uh, during the weekend. But, uh, but until then, have a lovely weekend, have a good time and enjoy whatever you can do in this lockdown time. And uh, I'll see you again on Sunday morning, and uh, God willing, and then next week again for more thoughts for the day. God bless. Bye bye.